In today's episode of Brolovento Sailing, I have some footage from two projects. One was the installation of a, an outboard crane on the stern of the boat, and the other project was the installation of the solar panels and uh, controllers. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, hopefully there's something in it that uh, you'll enjoy or that you'll learn from. Otherwise, if you're hoping to see some sailing, there, there isn't any in this uh, episode. One of the reasons I thought I would share this is that I was so grateful for the many channels that included similar content, solar panel installations, etc. Uh, and that was really helpful for me um, in terms of learning how to do this work. Um, and so if there's something here that someone else can learn from, then that would make me very happy. Hope you enjoy it. Super low tide today. It's actually really hot too. It's 36 degrees, supposed to be 40 tomorrow and 42 on Monday. Funny how we always seem to have a full wheelbarrow on the lowest of tides. <laughs> okay, so I'm really trying to psych myself up. I need to um, drill some holes in the boat. So I'm installing a lift, a crane lift for the outboard motor and I thought I was going to have to put a, a bracket on the, on the stern, on the transom, but uh, it turns out that I can put uh, the mounting plate on the deck right next to the push pit, so I'll show you some pictures of that. But... So this is the area here where the base plate, see I've got it marked out there with the four holes. Uh, is going to go. This is the base plate for the uh, outboard crane. So, base plate just goes right there, and then the the tube or the the pole sits on top of that. Okay. Well, we've got the crane installed, so that'll make a big difference with the. Outboard. I'm going to have to move the upboard to this side, of course. Safe to say, you know, at the beginning of this, I knew next to nothing about installing solar panels. I've spent hours and hours watching videos and reading blogs and just doing the research. And uh, I still have a, a number of questions about the process. Um, you know, one is just the method to, um, to actually attach the panels to the bimini top. The bimini top is actually going to be the location for the panels. It's quite a, a large space. The, under the boom is the tricky part. Actually, I can fit all three across the top. Um, the problem is, is the third one is going to be slightly under the boom, so that's the tricky, but I might have a workaround for that. These are the SunPower solar panels, the flexible panels. They are 110 watt panels, and I have three of them. Okay, so here are the parts for my system so far. So I have a couple of Victron MPP-T controllers. One is a 75 15 and the other is a 10 and the reason I did that is because with the three panels uh, I'm going to be connecting two of them to this one uh, 75 15 charger and because it's a 15 amp uh, Controller uh, I'm going to be comfortable that I'm not going to exceed 15 amps with um, two of my panels I think they are a maximum of six amps uh, each and then the other controller is the 10, which I'll use with the third pa uh, panel. The reason I didn't just get um, a larger capacity controller is that uh, what I've learned in my research is that if you have uh, a lot of shadow on one of the panels or you have inconsistent sun exposure on the panels, it's best to have separate controllers for each of them because um, you can have problems with the, the levels of charge and so that's what I decided to do. Then I have here a fuse box. So this, this fuse box will, um, the wiring from the controllers will go into the fuse box before 
I go into the battery. So um, directly from the controllers to the fuse box, some fuse, fuses uh, just drop on top here. And then I've got the two posts, positive and negative, that'll go right to the battery. Over here is my wiring, uh, about, about 100 feet of wiring. One of the problems or issues I still need to solve is getting the wire into the boat. I've actually ordered um, a cable clam, a cable clam that attaches to the side of the hull. Of course, I'll have to drill some holes, which I'm not looking forward to, but that's just a necessity. Um, so this will have to be cut uh, to length, um, probably I think I need about um, 20 feet to get from uh, the top of the bimini to uh, the area where the battery is and where the controllers will be installed. I've also ordered some MC4 connectors. That's these, these connectors here. So I ordered those from Amazon and they should be here shortly, hopefully, uh, so that when I start cutting wire and getting ready for the install, I'll be able to uh, clip these connectors in. So this is my electrical area on the boat and I've got uh, down here is the battery bank um, and the uh, DC panel is over here on the side and this is kind of the handsome motherboard. And up here is the AC panel and behind the panel I uh, just have a little bit of space there and I think that is where I'm going to install the the controllers. What I'm hoping to do to install the controllers back here is I bought just a, a length of PVC door casing. So it's waterproof, it's fairly thin, and I'll attach the pieces of uh, PVC to the side of the hull and then screw the controllers into the PVC. And I think I'll probably use either Velcro or some sort of double-sided tape to attach to the side of the hull. So this is little my little circuit board. So I've got uh, my first positive wire into the uh, battery out from the controller into the positive on the um, breaker box. And then the negative wire will run up here to this connection. And here's the fuse for the circuit. I'm just using uh, 10 gauge wire for the connections. I might need your help to untwist, to, or to twist these in the opposite direction. Gotcha. Hey there. Having fun pushing wire? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's fun, but we're getting there. So that's the aftermath of all the cables being pulled through. So on the right, there are three conduits sticking out. And the one in the middle um, had the pull through cord. So you can see I used an orange piece of line uh, to pull the pull through cord back out again uh, to use it for something else. Although there's not very much room in there after pulling four cables through. It was quite a grunt and took a couple of hours. And they're not going that far, but uh, it took me pulling at one end and Catherine pushing um, in here to get them through. It was very tricky. So the conduit comes out down here under the shower seat, just to the left of that white hose. Um, you can kind of see the white pull string uh, going in there. So the cables then run underneath that white pipe to the right with that big bundle of cables up through a hole in the bulkhead and then out the other side into the electrical area. And here are all the cables coming out. So that is awesome. The cables will run up and behind here and the controllers are 
we're going to go on that space there on the side of the hull. And here's my little panel, all wired up and ready to go. So I have the two controllers. I've got the 7515 on the left and then the 10 amp on the right. So the two panels are right, wired in series and will run through this controller. And then there's a single panel that's going to run through this controller. And then in the center here, I've got uh, the fuse. Um, and then these two mains out to the battery, which is down there. And outside the boat, so we've got the, the wires, all four wires are coming down off the top of the bimini where the panels are. And they run down the bimini support pole there. And then they take a bit of a left turn. Actually, we did that, uh, that 90 degree turn on purpose because then now if any water drips down there, it should drip uh, at the low point at, at that elbow. Uh, before it all runs down onto the, the cable clamp. And here is the cable clamp. It was a little tricky drilling for that. That's quite a thick uh, spot to drill through. It's a maybe an inch plus. It's uber strong because it has to uh, accommodate the back stay and uh, there is actually a, an aluminum plate in there as well but it's not too thick and I was able to drill through it. So this little cable clam is pretty cool. It was pretty tough though to actually pull the wires through that rubber gasket in the center. Uh, a lot of friction on there which is actually a good thing because that's what makes it waterproof. But it looks great and uh, does the trick. All right, so after many hours of work, kind of solid blues. Yeah, they're mostly solid. They're blinking off every once in a while. I don't think it's regular. We think what's happening down here. Well, it went down to 2.5. It's gone down quite a bit. I wonder if that's shadow. Just let me go. Yeah, go move the boom and we'll see what happens. Sorry, I don't have this on the gimbal. It makes it hard to see. Stay steady. Oh my God, yeah, it's like 13.4. 11, 12, 13, 14. Let it fall back on and let's see what happens. So just to give you a little bit of a context to this next segment, I had wired to the battery uh, positive to positive negative to negative and it did not work i thought maybe i made a mistake with the controllers rewired them uh, no charge so eventually after looking at a whole bunch of other blogs and forums and uh, i found the answer which is in this next segment how are you feeling I'm feeling pretty good that I got it working. <laughs> I'm amazed. You are amazing. That's awesome. Well, I wasn't so amazing when I was mad and grumpy and, you know. I still know you're amazing. <laughs> so it all came down to, um, so I had both the positive and negative wires connected to the battery. And I read on a post that, anyway, sparing all the details, um, the negative should go on the negative side of the shunt. And so I have a shunt and so I connected the wire to the shunt and bingo, we had charging. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So now the fridge is running and we still have seven amps going into the battery. Oh, fabulous. Hmm. Great. So that is very good news. Good news. is one of the best sources of information that I found was Jeff Cote from Pacific Yacht Systems in Vancouver 
uh, they have a channel on YouTube and he has uh, many, many excellent videos on the process for uh, solar panel installs. I found it incredibly helpful. You might have to look through a few of them, but they do demonstrations on how to crimp uh, the, uh, the connectors, uh, really helpful tips on, on layout, um, and, and just the basic installation uh, concepts and things to be uh, aware of and careful of. One of the biggest pieces, I think, for me is I was so, so careful around just the little details like um, stripping the wire, uh, crimping on the connectors, making sure the connection was uh, really, uh, really good with from the wire to the uh, charge controller, making sure that there were no sort of lost strands of wire that can potentially create hot spots. As Jeff would say over and over, this kind of work needs to be done 100% uh, correct. Uh, a 95 or even 99% correct job, uh, that 1% could lead to uh, things like fire, or, uh, things that could destroy your boat or hurt someone very quickly. So I just want to put a disclaimer that I am by no means an expert in this. This was just my experience. This is how it went for me. These are some of the decisions I made. But when it came to the actual work of doing the electrical, um, I was very careful to make sure everything was perfect uh, in terms of the connections uh, because it's just there's too much at stake with you know your investment and your 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 safety. So do make sure that you are uh, very careful if you do embark on this yourself and, and do the proper um, background research. Um, it's more work than it would appear. The pulling of the cables, determining, you know, your um, there are many methods for uh, attaching your, your panels to your boat. Um, they're all excellent methods. Uh, for me, I actually went with magnets. I couldn't bring myself to make holes in my brand new uh, Bimini canvas. Uh, I, I I tried the magnets. I reinforced it with uh, some some rope lashing down, um, you know, from the corners out on the panels. We do have strong winds where we have our boat, and so I was a little bit worried about that. But I've had the boat out in 20 plus knots, and it's been rock solid with the magnets. They're rare earth magnets. I have. Um, probably uh, six to eight pairs of them on, e on each panel, and it's worked super well. So good luck with your project. Uh, do the research, have fun. It's going to take some time. And at the end of the day, the project was well worth it. We uh, spent two and a half weeks on the boat this summer. I think we had to run the engine maybe once on a rainy day. Otherwise, the panels kept up with the, the job, uh, charged the boat up, kept the... Uh, the, the refrigerator's running, and so we were super happy with the results. So, hopefully this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.